All right, you should have just heard that little announcement that the recording is in progress. And so now I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can everybody see uh, the presentation? All right, then we can go ahead and get started. So welcome back to Virtual Ward Night. Thank you for being here. We do these on the 1st and 15th of every month. And for this one, our topic is reminders and resources for winter. We did a meeting similar to this one for fall. Um, so this is just stuff you need to know from our neighborhood services team uh, as we head into colder weather. Uh, I just put these community agreements in the chat. These are the community agreements we use in every meeting. Be present, be compassionate, be generous, be brave. Just be considerate of, of everybody else in the meeting. Make sure everybody has time to speak, things like that. Um, and then the agenda is just below that. We'll hear some updates from Lenny and then we'll get right into it with um, Connor, our neighborhood services coordinator. And then we'll leave time for Q&A at the end. Okay, take it away, Lenny. Hi, everyone, and thanks for being here. Um, that was Audrey, who's our communications coordinator. And um, we're glad to have Connor on the call, also our constituent services coordinator, to talk to you about how to prepare for the winter. Um, I wanted for the fall, and I wanted to say thank you all for joining today. And, um, you know, every other time that we have these meetings, I learned so much more about what you want in the board. So I really appreciate you showing up. Um, today in city council, we passed our budget and we are very excited to, to know that this budget um, is not uh, raising taxes on us. Um, we have passed so many progressive campaign campaign um, ideas that we, we all uh, fought for as progressives, including uh, pathways to end homelessness in Chicago including pathways to um, continue a, an alternative to policing um, when someone is in a crisis, mental crisis, treatment, not trauma. Um, we have started on a path towards um, sustainability in, in the 48th Ward and in Chicago with a fully funded Department of Environment. Um, and speaking of the things that we are creating together, I'm very glad to know that we are also devoting um, money towards um, a commission for reparations. Uh, we also have a department for um, citizens who are re-entering um, into, into our communities. So we have so much going on with this new budget and I'm very excited to talk to you more about it and to, to hear from you about what you think, um, think about it and, and how we can improve the way that we address public safety um, in our wards because truly that's that's at the top of everybody's minds. Um, we have 300 new positions that uh, will become civilianized, which means um, they'll come from behind desk duty and out into the force um, so that so that we can have um, more of a presence in our wards and, and in our streets. Um, but there's so much more work to do in terms of um, what we are calling public safety right now. It has to also address what's happening on our streets and sidewalks um, and how we are taking care of our infrastructure, including pathways towards transit, such as the, um, the Argyle Red Line uh, right now, where um, Broadway and Winona, we, we found um, it was a very unsafe pathway to get to transit and we did have a death hit and run. So we addressed that very quickly uh, with CDOT and working with the 47th Ward. And if you walked over there right now, you would also see that um, there is a new refuge island there, which is going to be so incredibly helpful to preventing um, deaths and pedestrian, uh, premature pedestrian deaths in our ward. Um, I'm really glad to say that our ward is one of the most engaged wards in Chicago, although it's one of the smallest footprints, we are quilted together by incredible block clubs. And we were able to meet with block club leaders. Some of you are on the call today. Thank you so much for joining um, for an inaugural um, meeting. 
And we look forward to more conversations about ways that we can work together to, to really build the community that we want to see, to address things like um, preservation uh, of our buildings, creating um, and maintaining our tree canopies, um, making sure that we have a zoning advisory council that is um, addressing the concerns that we have in terms of development in our neighborhoods. And uh, through these block clubs, you can also find that this is a way to get to know your neighbors in a very hyper-local way. Um, we have a very diverse board, including the Sheridan uh, Road Condo Association, all the way to Edgewater Glen, to Andersonville and Ajon Argyle. Um, and I look forward to having more conversations with you all, whether or not you're associated with a block club, perhaps you are associated with the Chamber of Commerce, or perhaps you're associated with a school, or even our public libraries. Um, any way that you can get involved civically in, in our community is only gonna help us um, to create a safe, welcoming, and inclusive environment that we all wanna live in. So thank you all for being here. And with that, I'll hand it back to Audrey. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll just keep it moving right along um, to Connor, our Neighborhood Services Coordinator. Take it away. All right, hello everybody, I'm Connor. I'm uh, the Neighborhood Service Coordinator here at the 48th Ward. Uh, very happy to be here tonight. Uh, and uh, tonight just gonna go over a few things for uh, the winter uh, months. Um, just some reminders. Uh, we have my email uh, there, so please reach out with any questions. Uh, I know a few of you already, um, but reach out with any questions that uh, come up or anything that we can help with, and uh, we'll reach back out. So I'll start off um, with uh, just some reminders for the winter: uh, sidewalk snow removal. Uh, we're gonna the shoveling. Um, we do need to do, if it's done between 7 uh, a.m. and 7 p.m., you have to have it shoveled by uh, 10 p.m. Um, that's so if, if it's between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m., it has to be removed by 7 a.m. Uh, warming centers in the area. We have the North Area Community Service Center, 845 West Wilson. Um, that um, well, we get a lot of help from them. They uh, have helped us with so many uh, different people in the ward. Uh, so we highly recommend going that if, uh, or sending people there, if they're looking for warming centers, that when the more warming centers open up in the ward, um, we will be posting that on our uh, website and uh, newsletter. Uh, also a reminder that uh, no parking in the snow zones. Um, Chicago um, for uh, you can't park when there's any snow from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. from December 1st to April 1st. That's with any snow. Um, we're going to be posting all this online as well. So if you have any questions about parking, please let us know. Furnace reminder uh, to check your furnaces uh, with all the flooding. Um, if your furnace isn't working or if there is damage from floods, you might be able to get FEMA relief funds from that if your insurance didn't cover that. So that's something um, I have information on as well that I can send your way. Um, the one that we uh, met with Department of Buildings and one of their um, biggest three in one complaints during the winter are the no heat. So if uh, heat ever goes out, um, you can put in a three in one, they uh, get to those right away. Uh, please reach out to us as well. So we know what's going on and we can uh, uh, talk to our people uh, within a department of buildings, but uh, they are really quick about the three one one request when it comes to heating. Um, and uh, the heat ordinance applies from uh, starting September 15th through June 1st. Um, it is the heat season, so it's already going on. So uh, the 15th through June 1st, um, and it has to be um, kept. There's just think 68 degrees because that's where it's um, most likely, or that's where if you're looking at all the different buildings, it uh, differs between like a, a degree or two, but 68 degrees is what it has to be kept at between that time. Um, and also if you need uh, the any uh, assistance with um, paying if your uh, heat goes out. There is a program for that as well. Uh, that's the Emergency Heating Repair Program, um, and that gives out grants to uh, owner um, for people who have from one to four um, 
unit uh, properties, uh, you can get money towards that, and that's a grant, so you won't have to pay it back. Uh, but reach out as well if you need that. Uh, but uh, throughout the winter, just uh, stay close to us. Give us a uh, call if anything comes up. Um, the newsletter will keep you informed. Uh, thanks to everybody who came out to the flu clinic um, this past week. But other than that, I believe that's it. So if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Yeah, so we'll include those details in the newsletter this week as well. Um, and I was dropping links in the chat while Connor was talking um, with some of the specifics on those things. But that is the end of what we have to share. And so, um, Lenny, unless there's anything you'd like to add, we can move right into Q&A. Does that sound okay? Sounds good. All right. So, the way we'll do Q&A is just raise your hand using the Zoom raise hand feature. Depending on what your screen looks like, that should be in the toolbar, either at the top or bottom of your screen. You may have to hit the dot, dot, dot more to raise your hand. Um, or, you know, feel free to use the chat to ask a question and we'll just call on people and you can ask your question out loud. So does anybody have any questions either about what we've talked about here today or anything else that's been on your mind? Audrey, will you read the question? Oh, yep, I see it. All right, we've got a question from Greg. Are we prepared to help the migrants as the sh uh, at the shelter as it gets colder? Thanks for that question. So, so uh, just as a general update, um, we have a shelter, a temporary shelter at the Broadway Armory, which is currently housing just under 350 mm -hmm. new arrivals which is uh, fully staffed by favorite staffing and also supported by our neighborhood organizations, including Chinese Mutual Aid, um, the Vietnam Association, um, Central Romero, um, Edgewater Mutual Aid is also assisting in that way. And the, the question is, are we prepared to um, get through the winter with, the, with what we have? Let's see, are we prepared to help the migrants at the shelter as it gets, as it gets colder? So I'm really proud of the work that our um, community-based organizations have done working together, including ECRA, which includes the Ishmaeli Center on Broadway. And we just hosted a coat and luggage drive for the new arrivals. Um, we're really glad to see so many families come. Um, they, they waited for, for a bit before they were able to come inside the building and, and uh, grab a coat, but we had a coat for everybody. Um, we also had a luggage for everybody and a lock for the luggage, um, which is great. Um, those that are in police districts, uh, for instance, at the 48th Ward, we're represented by two. The 24th Police District, which is north of Thorndale, and the 20th police district, which is south of Thorn Thorndale. We don't have any police districts in the 48th ward. The closest one that we have is on Lincoln. And I would invite you um, to go by the police stations at any time, just to check in with folks and see how, that they're, how they're doing and or plug into the Edgewater Mutual Aid Association who goes directly to police stations um, all over Chicago to check in on the arrivals. And what we're seeing at the, yeah, it's it's really great um, that we have um, so many people who wanna help and so many people who, including Care for Real, which is in the 48th Ward, who who does have a, a clothing pantry. Central Romero also has a clothing pantry. Um, and so those that are in the shelter, they have the coats and the, the foods that they need, but we could still continue checking on them because what's happening is buses arrive to Chicago. We are going to tighten up the way that we are receiving new arrivals in a, in a centralized way to make sure um, we know who's coming 
so that we could track them and direct them into the place that they need to go. If they are not connected with family, then they are directed to a police station, which is where our currently unhoused Chicagoans go if they need shelter. So families go there. And the thing is that there's only limited space in each of those police stations. Every single one of them are at capacity. There are upwards of 200 people that are living in and around the police station. They live outside of the police station in tents when inside is um, too crowded. Um, and what is happening at the police station is that those that need to work there, including the officers, including every employee that works in the police station have to truly walk over bodies, families, children, um, pregnant mothers to get to their stations to work. And this is not right. The goal is to decompress the police stations with the temporary shelters and housing. And so the 48th Ward is one of those temporary shelters. Um, but again, if you wanna help, the best way to plug in, and, and Audrey will share the link in the chat, is to keep getting our newsletters, subscribe to them, and also check our website, because we have a list of organizations that you should definitely check out, um, donate to, volunteer with, um, and also you yourself can go to any police station in Chicago just to check in on the officers too, to see how they're doing and also see if anyone um, living at the police stations need anything. Right now, absolutely want to make sure that those who are at the police stations um, have the proper footwear as we're, as it's getting colder. I mean, it was a beautiful day today, but you know, Chicago, if you don't like the weather, just wait a second and it'll change. So uh, we need them to have protection for their feet. Um, and also they need, um, especially the, the children, coats, they need coats. In the 48th Ward, we're really glad that we are within very close walking distance from the shelter to public schools, including Swift and um, Sen, the high school. We also have Gaudi and Haight, which is very close by too. And those teachers and the families are very loving and, and um, caring for the new new families, our new neighbors. Um, so that's where we are right now in terms of preparing for the winter. Um, again, the, the tents that are near the police stations, most of them are not uh, built for long, cold, snowy winters. So we really need to make sure that um, we're finding pathways to, to get folks um, through the system. Uh, in the 48th Ward, I'm really glad to see that what we're doing in Chicago um, is helping. So our mayor, Brandon Johnson, did go to DC and pushed our President Biden to, to accelerate the process wherein people can get temporary protective status and also work authorization so that they can continue on to a path where they could take care of their families and um, pay for rent um, and work because that's really the goal. So I was glad to check in with the Broadway Armory shelter managers and hear that there is a movement of people not only coming into the shelter, but also moving out. Moving out means that they're finding um, housing, that they are finding jobs, and that they're finding stability beyond these temporary shelters. So if you also um, know Spanish, speak, can speak Spanish or understand Spanish, or know of friends or family that can help um, with Spanish translation, uh, we welcome that too. Um, please connect with Centro Romero uh, because they need help, especially on Saturdays so that people can come in and um, get help with their applications for work authorization. So those are just some of the ways that you can help. And if you need to know more, Audrey can let you know more about our resource that we have online. Yes, um, thank you. I'm just sharing a link to Central Romero's volunteer signup um, so that anybody who's interested in that has easy access to that. Um, 
but yeah, thank you so much for your question, Greg. The document that I shared earlier um, with the, you know, how to help, that's a document that we are working to update regularly. So just kind of keep an eye on that as and new opportunities will pop up um, for ways you can get involved. For anybody who joined in the last few minutes, uh, a little bit earlier, our neighborhood services coordinator, Connor, went over some resources for the winter. So things like um, emergency heating repair and how to report no heat in your building to 311 um, and no parking zones for snowy weather. So if you have any questions about that or anything else in the 48th ward, um, we are in the Q&A section. So feel free to raise your hand or put something in the chat and we will answer your questions. I want to say thank you again to Audrey and Connor from my office for being here. Um, and also thank you for showing up to our ward nights. Um, in, in other wards, they, they do ward nights differently. Um, we've been doing it in this format for a, a couple of sessions now, and we would love your feedback. Um, this isn't the only way to connect with us um, in the office. Certainly you can come in um, when uh, we are open or call or email. And um, for me, you can also make an appointment to, to connect with me this, at, um, at any time. But I do appreciate it. I, I do want to shout out to um, Stan and Cycle, Alicia for being here. Hello. And Phil and um, Greg for also joining today. And if you have any other questions, please unmute yourself or uh, raise your hand or put them in the chat because we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, Phil, you can go ahead and unmute. Yes, hi. Um, so this will be my uh, first uh, official Chicago winter uh, coming forward. And uh, could you expand a little bit on the no parking zone uh, stuff for my vehicle? Yeah, yeah. Connor, do you want to go ahead and take that one? Mm -hmm. So the no parking... Uh, let's see. So, uh, from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. from uh, starting December 1st to April 1st, um, with any snow at all, um, you'll see signs for that. So that's uh, 107 miles in Chicago. You'll see particular signs, and then there are different signs that uh, on the more main streets. That's when there's uh, two inches. That's when any snow is on the ground. So if there's any snow two inches or more, um, you can't uh, park there at all. But it's really just be wary of the signs um, in your neighborhood. That's all going to be on uh, roads that are used all the time. Uh, side streets you'll be fine on, but uh, just be wary of all the signs because it, it, it'll be printed out right there. Okay, thank you so much. All right, and then in the chat, Greg says, I heard a rumor that we might get an indoor public pool um, in Andersonville slash Edgewater neighborhood. Is that a real possibility? Um, Lenny, do you know anything about that? Or or Connor? Yeah, the, the conversation about getting a pool in Edgewater has been going on for some time. Um, and it's centered around the Broadway Armory, which would be fantastic. And I know that our Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky in the 9th Congressional District is supportive and also found money to support that project. Um, so yes, it's in the pipeline. Um, we have to keep pushing and letting our uh, state representatives and our congressional representatives know that we want that to happen. Um, I myself would love a pool. Um, I know that you know the 48th ward is one of the most walkable areas and it would be fantastic to just walk to a pool. Although I did did meet a 48th ward resident who every day since the pandemic has been going to um, 
Hyde Park, promontory point, to swim in the lake at, at all um, temperatures, including when there's ice blocks in the lake. But um, yes, it would be lovely to go to a pool in the 48th Ward and uh, the Broadway Armory is is one location where they're seriously looking to, to install a pool. Thanks for the question. Audrey, do you want to talk a little bit about the Halloween decorating contest? Are you ready to? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we did actually announce the winner in last week's newsletter, but we hosted a Halloween decoration contest in the ward um, that was, you know, for, for house decorations, inside, outside, whatever people wanted to do um, on social media. And we had a couple of people submit some really, really great decorations and we put them to a vote. And the winner was um, a woman named Amy Skeen, I believe. I'm going to stop sharing the slides so that I can see if I can find these pictures because they were amazing and I can share those instead. Um, but yeah, keep up to date with our newsletter because we've got uh, some pretty fun stuff in there. We definitely want to do more contests and engagement. There's also a little link at the very bottom of the newsletter each week where you can submit your feedback. Um, so as uh, the comms coordinator, I put together the newsletter and I like to check on that form pretty regularly. So if there's something that you would really like to see in the newsletter, you can let me know there. I'll also get that link and send it in the chat directly in case folks are interested in that. Um, but yeah, I've got this pulled up. So let me share the photos of the winning decorations. Just a moment. Okay, so this is uh, just, you know, the last week's newsletter. And here are the photos that she posted on Facebook. And these were the winner. I believe that this uh, residence is on Bryn Mawr. I don't know if her decorations are still up at this point, but if you wanted to walk by, you might see them if they are. Um, and yeah, tune in next year for uh, annual Halloween decoration contest part two. This was the winner. Yeah, that house is definitely on Bryn Mawr. <laughs> All right, I'm pulling up this newsletter feedback link in case people want to send me some notes about the newsletter or some requests for what you'd like to see there. Give me just a moment. All right, there's that. And then I posted the subscribe link a little ways up in case anybody here is not signed up for the newsletter. I'll go ahead and send that again. And then we are also relatedly at the 48th Ward on um, Instagram, Facebook, and X, formerly Twitter. So you can find... Uh, similar fun things happening year round there. Okay, I'll go ahead and share the Q&A slide again, just in case people do have any other questions. Does anybody else have any other questions, you can also feel free to throw them in the actual Q&A feature if you just want us to have a question on record that you don't want answered now, but we've got plenty of time if people do have other questions that they want answered here and now. All right, I think that might be it. I don't think people have 
too many more burning questions. Is there anything else you wanted to say, uh, Lenny or Connor? Connor, do you have anything to add? And then I can go after no, you. No, just uh, please reach out. Um, you had the email and uh, the phone number. So just reach out and we'll uh, respond or uh, answer right away. Thanks, Connor. Thank you again for coming tonight. There was, there's a lot of time on these calls to ask questions. So if you didn't have any today, that's perfectly fine. I'm really grateful that you came anyway, um, just to get an update and to to get to know us a little bit better. And just know that you you are welcome in the office at any time. And we we would love to hear from you about all the communications that we put out there, our newsletter, our social media, these calls. Um, and it's really important for, for me to know what to, what's important to you. I, I mentioned earlier that block clubs are, are, they've been in the ward and organizing in the ward since the 70s. Uh, you could read about them in the Edgewater Historical Society. Um, and I believe that every block in the 48th ward um, is associated with a block club, including south of Foster, uh, because we do go to south of Foster, um, just south of Argyle, one block south of Argyle on Ainsley to Marine Drive, and then to to Lawrence. Um, so we're really proud of the community engagement that we have had in in the ward. Um, we also have one of the most diverse boards in Chicago across race and class and um, sexual identity. It is the, the uh, month that we think about our trans neighbors. Um, uh, trans Day of Remembrance is um, going to be celebrated in the ward, especially through the Chicago Therapy Collective. If you don't know them, they're in Andersonville and they, they really focus on the mental health of um, trans our trans neighbors, but if they are doing well, then we all do well. So please follow them um, and make sure that um, that if you have neighbors who need mental health support, um, regardless of their race or class or, or um, citizenship status, there are support networks for you and for them and for your friends and family. Um, mental health is really at the forefront of everyone's minds, um, including those who work in the criminal justice system, including our um, police officers. So at every level of our of our justice system, um, mental health is really being talked about in ways that are real. For instance, in, in our police stations now, um, it's, it's taxing for everybody living on the floors. Um, nobody wants to live on the floors of police stations. So, um, and it's very difficult. That's, a, that's an actual work environment for our officers and that's our that's a home for those who are houseless and that's our it's our landing place for um, people to go to who have nothing so our temporary shelters are one step um, up from a police station um, or a one one step up from living on the on Lakeshore Drive in tents but it's you know it's not a, a, a permanent solution that's why I'm really glad that the city council and this administration is working to end homelessness with a uh, revenue stream, permanent revenue stream through Bring Chicago Home. This is um, an initiative that's been in the works for, for decades. Um, and it's finally, and, and last administration, it wasn't even um, a conversation. They, they couldn't even bring it up in city council because they didn't ever have quorum. And now, um, we've moved it along through the committees to the, to the point where it's going back to the voters to decide um, uh, on Bring Chicago Home in March. The next election is March 19th. So um, on that day, you will, as voters, be able to vote on uh, whether or not we should have a permanent revenue stream to end houselessness in Chicago. Um, if that passes, then it will be brought back to the city council so that we could craft an ordinance to figure out where the extra revenue, $100 million a year will go um, to, to find ways to bring people not only to a, a building that they could call a home, but also the wraparound services that they need 
those who are have are victims of um, gender based violence, those who need support because of drug addiction and abuse, and um, those who um, need jobs, frankly. So, so we want people to be independent and healthy, um, and through that, we are all going to be much better for it. So. I look forward to that work ahead and we'll continue to talk about the policies um, that we have passed in city council so far, including um, expanded paid time off ordinance, including um, treatment, not trauma, um, including a um, the Bring Chicago Home uh, ordinance um, through the, the committees and onto um, as a referendum at the next election and um, so many other things, the Department of Environment, um, all these things that the 48th Ward has been talking about for so long, that's gonna just feed into um, a really healthy public um, public space that we wanna live in. Our schools um, are essential. Uh, we wanna make sure that our kids are getting the, the, um, the resources that they need. Uh, we want to make sure that our libraries are getting the resources that, that, that they need. If you don't know, we have two fantastic libraries, Edgewater Library and the Vizazian Library and Uptown. Um, and so, and our transit system. This is one thing that we're going to continue to talk about, which is uh, what is going to happen underneath the L track after the reconstruction of the red and purple lines. Um, first time in a hundred years, we're going to see upgrades and new stations, including on Bryn Mawr, right, um, where we have our office. So let's start continuing to talk uh, about how we want to um, create open spaces for us to gather um, underneath the L-Track or what we want to do with it. So we'll start those conversations in January. I hope you will join us then. Um, until then, I thank you for being here. Uh, let's continue to talk about ways that we could grow our communities and, and make us stronger and also safer. I'll give it back to Audrey. All right, thanks very much, uh, Lenny and Connor and all of you for coming and spending uh, these wonderful 45 minutes with us. We hope to see you at the next one. The next one will be December 1st. Um, and the registration link for that one is already live, I believe. Um, and you can find it through our public calendar, which is on our website. So yeah, see you December 1st and enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks. See ya.